So the big question is this, how these entrepreneurs who started from scratch and had no idea how to sell or market their products or services online and then later on made over 6 figures, 7 figures or even 8 figures became best in their niches and found their dream customers to sell. My name is RJ Ahmed and find this all out in our interviews with entrepreneurs show. I interviewed these entrepreneurs and tried to pick their brain of how they actually did that and how they took their business as well as their life to the next level. This podcast is all about the entrepreneurs who strive so hard to become super awesome in their niches. Welcome to Interviews with Entrepreneurs. Welcome to Interviews with Entrepreneurs show where we interview entrepreneurs who are super awesome in their niches and today we have special guest. Now, if you ever been the part of internet marketing space and everything out there, and there comes a point where you need, you know, you need to outsource your task. You know, Russell Brunner, you know, focus on who, not how. You need to outsource those people out there. But a lot of things become complicated out there in the long run because you don't know how to hire good people, how to have proper systems in place and everything. And this guest not only have mastered outsourcing out there, but also created an eight-figure business free up marketplace, which allowed people out there to hire people and freelancers out there. And not only that, he also started to teach other people as well with his program, Outsource School. So please welcome Nathan Hirsch. Hey, Nathan. Hey, RJ. Thank, thanks for having me. I like your intro song. It's catchy. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for being on the show. Like, I truly appreciate you. Yeah, no problem. It should be a lot of fun. Yeah. And yeah, the guys like who are jumping on live, you can use hashtag live. The people who are going to jumping on replay can use hashtag replay out there. And again, Nathan, thank you so much for being on the show. If people don't know about your backstory, could you tell us about like how, how everything got started for you? Yeah, so I was a, a, I'm a long time entrepreneur. I've never had a, a real job. In college, I started an Amazon business uh, selling textbooks, which eventually led me to doing trial and error and, and figuring out what else to sell on Amazon had a lot of success selling baby products. If you can imagine that, uh, got into a, a weird niche at, at a good time. And that led me to hire virtual assistants because college kids were, were pretty unreliable. Uh, I was trying to hire my, my friends in college that didn't go too well. Ended up building a, a marketplace for virtual assistants and freelancers to compete with the Upworks and Fibers of the world. Uh, we scaled that to eight figures in four years and, and we were acquired in 2019. Uh, and the cool thing about that company is we had no office, no US yeah. employees. It was just me, my business partner and 35 remote virtual assistants in the Philippines running all day-to-day -day operations. So that was cool. And, and once we sold that, we started our, our new venture outsource school where if people want to learn hiring systems from eight figure entrepreneurs, that's the, the go to place for that. And we also invest in companies and look for minority equity uh, to come in and help them build teams and help them grow. So that's kind of what, what I'm up to now. That, that's awesome out there, you know, because a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, just start their business nowadays, you know, most of the people out there are young and then they get into this space and then, you know, they start to shift into different things out there. Like still, like for me, I'm, I'm 21 right now. I started when I was 18 or 19. I just got into university and then I started to do the stuff. I'm still in, but I'm part-time in university now. I got myself, like, you know, part-time student, full-time entrepreneur, but you know, that that's what I call but yeah, that's the, that's the, the transition is super awesome. And when I started to use like the, your, uh, your software that you had, like free up, you know, to hire people out there, I didn't knew about that, you know, and it was that solely based on VAs. One of the biggest thing uh, that most people get stuck is how to choose correct VAs. What do you think about it? Yeah. I mean, that, that's probably a lot to cover uh, on one podcast, but I mean, we have a, a process for interviewing, onboarding, training, and managing. And we spent five plus years yeah. developing this process and it's all designed to, to be a, a fast hiring process. It's no Zoom videos, everything's on Slack. And, and we really put every virtual system through our process. And we've got hundreds of members of Outsource School all using the exact same hiring process. And we try to make it step by step. So the, the, the short answer is you need a good repeatable hiring process and then people can decide if they want to do trial and error and try to figure it out themselves like, like I spent years doing or go to outsource school where we give you the exact systems, the exact processes. 
Yeah, and that's absolutely awesome. And it definitely makes sense on that aspect out there that they need to be sort of hiring process. And yeah, it's, it's you know, broad range out there, but yeah, that definitely do makes sense. But at what point you realized, okay, you were in your high school, you know, you were selling books and you got to realize, okay, you would use outsourcing and everything. At what point you realize that you really don't need any other person out there to get things done or create, a, you know, eight figure business out there or even sell it because your free app marketplace was relied on just VAs. So at what point you got realized that, okay, I don't need any person out there apart from the VAs to get things done and that's it. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I kind of started with the easiest task. I hired VA for, yeah. VA for something easy and then I gave them more work and more work and more work and got better at hiring them and training them. And and then I, I kind of woke up one day with the idea that, man, maybe they can do anything. Maybe they can do sales calls. Maybe they can do bookkeeping. And we, we've just done a lot of trial and error to see how far we could push the envelope. And it turns out you can push it very far. I mean, we, we have playbooks at Outsource School on how to have sales VAs. Like imagine a VA for your company talking to your clients and closing deals. If people go to outsourceschool.com and schedule a call with my team, that's who you're talking to. They're in the Philippines. They speak perfect English. They love Outsource School. They know the answers to all your questions. So the, and outside of that, like bookkeeping, billing with, with FreeUp, they were billing clients 200K a week. All this stuff can get done with virtual assistants and there, there really is no limit anymore. Yeah, that's that's awesome because a lot of people have that sort of, you know, mindset out there and it, it's kind of common, you know, in the marketplace, you probably have the idea about it that, you know, if someone, someone think about that, no one can does better work than they do. And they, if they try to go in and hire the VAs out there, they're like, ah, oh, man, you know, I just don't know these people out there not going to do the exact same of work about that, what we try to do. So what I try, uh, like what I'm going to ask is like when we go in and get the VAs out there, I know that, okay, there's a lot of things that you talk and, you know, talk about in your program out through school, where you're teaching them every single step of it. But what do you think about what is the number one mistake that people make when they're hiring a VA? What do you think about it? So the number one mistake that I see is not setting expectations. So we, I mentioned before, we do interviewing, onboarding, training, and managing. The onboarding, that's when you set expectations. If we like someone during the interview, but before we start investing any time and energy and money into training them, we go through all of our expectations, schedule, issues, communication, culture, rate, money, all of that, bonuses, raises, and make sure that we are 100% on the same page in writing so that nothing that comes up down the line we have not already addressed and that's what we walk you through at outsource school that is the number one mistake entrepreneurs make whenever someone has a, a va issue down the line 99 percent of the time it's because they didn't get on the same page with expectations up front yeah totally, totally. <coughs> like having sort of expectations and you know that sort of idea about there where people are like having different sort of mindset that hey you know it's going to happen and it don't get delivered they get stuck on it Totally. And I saw you uh, throughout the point, like throughout the time out there when I saw you, you were able to get on so many other awesome podcasts out there, you know, and so many awesome podcasts out there. And I also see in the intros and everything out there, which is super awesome. Like how you can define people out there that, hey, you know, and everything you have, have a process in the outro school, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. I mean, one thing that I did for four years is I would wake up every day to a list of places to reach out to from my virtual assistant. It would be in my inbox every morning when I woke up. Three blogs, three podcasts, three influencers, three Facebook group owners, uh, three potential clients, three potential partners. Like you, And you can do this however you want, depending on what you're looking for in your company. But teach your VA to do the research. You wake up, you fire off a few quick emails. Even if you've done nothing, or if you do nothing the rest of the day, you've done solid outreach. And if you're doing that five, six days a week, not going to take you much time. Your VA is doing all the work. It doesn't, your VA doesn't cost very much. We're talking five bucks an hour for maybe five yeah. or 10 hours a week, if that. And that consistency over time is going to lead to a lot of opportunities. It's not, it's not, you're not going to make a hundred thousand dollars in one day, but you're going to wake up at the end of the year and say, man, my business is a lot of people, man, I connected with a lot of people. I landed a lot of clients, whatever it is, because you're constantly doing that outreach. And because it, it, you're not, you don't have to sit there for eight hours a day doing outreach. The average entrepreneur isn't going to be able to do that consistently over time. 
Yeah. And, and there's sort of a limit out there how a single person can go in and reach out to a lot of people out there. Like, for example, if there, there are a lot of people out there who are working for you, regardless, they're not working full time, you're still having your own time working for your own self. And then those people are working on your business out there right to it. Oh, what was so, the question? Yeah. Oh, so like, I, yeah, I was just stating on the point out there. But one thing I want to ask, which is super common, and you probably have heard that a lot of times is when a person go in and get a VA out there, okay, they're okay, they're awesome, they're doing their job out there, everything is freaking fine. But they're investing everything on them and there comes a point where they're like, ah, you know, we're not working with you anymore, we're going anywhere else. Like, how can people go in and understand that state of objection over there with that their VA? Uh, sorry, I'm not sure I understood exactly what the question was. What was the question? Yeah. Yeah. So the question was like a lot of time what happened is when a VA comes in the business, mm -hmm. when the VA comes in the business out there, we start to let them know that, Hey, you know, this is your training. You can get more knowledge over here. You here's a course that you get more training over there. You started that your VA started to grow, but there comes a point where your VA be like, Hey, hey you know, I'm done. I'm not going to work with you. And I'm going to another oh, place. VA is quitting. So the, the key to reducing turnover is what we call our BARF method. So it's, it's a funny acronym, but it stands for getting VAs to buy in, showing appreciation, building relationships with them and creating a family inside your team. And if you're able to do that, that's how they're going to stick around. So the process we teach you at Outsource School are going to show you how to do all four things and reduce turnover. Our VAs love our business. They love working with us. They love yeah. the team. They're motivated. They care about the business. They're not going anywhere. Even if you are Jake King, in and offer them twice as much to leave outsource school and go work for you. They are not going anywhere. And that's what you need to set up. If not, then you're just waking up every day and crossing your fingers and hoping someone doesn't quit on you. Yeah. And, and creating that culture is super important out there when you're building your team around it, you know, so that they, they can relate their family sort of things out there and they can stick to it so that they make sure they don't go to another place. Absolutely. So yeah, uh, let's talk about your program out of school. Like when you thought about, okay, you know, I'm going to create this program and I'm going to start other people as well that, Hey, you know how to go for outsourcing, how to learn this and that, that talk us about like uh, your program out of school. Yeah. So we wanted to create the best membership out there to give people the hiring process from eight figure entrepreneurs, my business partner and I. So we took all of our processes from hiring, from creating standard operating procedures to hiring for specific roles and put it all in step-by-step -step form. So that you can just plug it into your business. You can even give it to your team. And if you go to outsourceschool.com, you can set up a phone call directly with my virtual assistants, talk to them about it um, and learn more and see if it's a good fit for you. So back in the day when I was figuring out how to hire and I didn't know what to do, I always wish someone just said, hey, here are the interview questions you asked. This is how you set expectations. This is how you run meetings. And so that's really what we tried to create with Outsource School. Yeah. And, and that's awesome out there because a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck when they start to outsource people out there, because as I told you, you know, there are a lot of people who have different sort of mindset out there that, Hey, you know, I just don't know if they're going to do, they have sort of restlessness out there because they're like, you know, are we, we just don't know that if, if the work going to be done or not, like so many questions they have in their mind and they get stuck to it. And I remember there was a point where you said that we don't need to even go in and communicate with them uh, over video because we're going to be communicating with them on Slack or Trello, like these type of things out there. And people just go in and every single time gets on a call and start to communicate with them. Yeah, we like Slack. We keep everything in writing unless the VA's role has something to do with phone calls like our sales VAs. But overall, that's a very small percentage of the VAs that, that you're going to hire. Um, we keep everything in writing. We Slack's a great way to see how quickly someone responds, how they understand what you're saying, how you understand what they're saying. I mean, normally you're going to be communicating with them. Uh, to them via Slack, via email, via Viber, whatever it is, you want to make sure the VA can communicate in the exact same method that you're going to communicate with them the most. And on top of that, some of the best VAs I've ever hired um, were just not comfortable on camera. They didn't like it. They weren't comfortable with their voice, talking to you as people, whatever it is, but that really had nothing to do with their role. And they were great VAs outside of that. And had I forced them to do a video interview, I never would have hired them and I would have missed out on my best hires. Yeah. And and that's one of the key points out there because everyone thinks like, you know, sort of corporate sort of mindset where they're like, ah, you know, we're gonna we're gonna have a video call with them, then we're gonna see if they're a good fit or not, and then we're gonna hire them. You know, that's the sort of corporate sort of mindset they had, but you came up with a complete new approach where it's like, you know, the way that they're gonna work is the way that we're gonna interact with them 
and then we're going to hire them throughout the process. Right. A hundred percent. And I mean, we do all everything on Slack. Our meetings are on Slack. A big key with working virtual assistants is get everything in writing. It's going to help you so much. Yeah. So everything is going to be in track so that there's not going to be any sort of problem out there in the long run. Right. Exactly. I mean, that's how you're going to communicate with them. I mean, we, and we have, there's some exceptions. Like we do a zoom happy hour once a month and that's fun, but we're not having important meetings on zoom yeah. unless it's like my sales VA. Like I meet with her once a week and, and we talk on zoom cause that's a big part of her job. Yeah. hundred percent. So like, okay, for example, there are a lot of people out there that get stuck at one point out there is for example, if they have a graphic VA, if they are video editors, they have outreach, you know, some people are who are doing outreaching and everything, you know, different sectors of getting your VA out there, how they can, and it's probably gonna be a silly question, but you know, that's a FAQ of people start to get have on that aspect is how they can go in, even though there's channel Slack. One thing that is super important for them is, and that's the reason where they get stuck is them making sure that they know that what they're doing is, you know, what's their job is. And they realize on that aspect as well. So like, how do you think about that? How people should go in and create a culture when they're creating systems with a lot of people? Yeah. I mean, it's not just what they're responsible for. It's also how they communicate, who they yeah. interact with, what's expected of them across the board. And, and and then, I mean, culture is one of those things where you need to spend time figuring out what your culture is, because if you don't spend time with doing that, you, you're just guessing then you need to find people that are a perfect culture fit because it's almost impossible to turn someone into a culture fit if they're not. And you need to get rid of anyone you have that is not a good culture fit, no matter how good they are at your job, at their job. And then third, you have to do things like those monthly happy hours to maintain that culture over time. And all three of those are incredibly important. Yeah, totally. Definitely makes sense. So like throughout the, your throughout your whole journey out there in out people how to do outsource what is the number one thing that you would like to say to the person to you when you started doing outsourcing yeah i mean start small i hire a va for five ten hours a week and in all my companies i started three companies with five thousand dollars or less so you don't need a big budget you don't need to wait there's an opportunity cost for waiting but start small hire that va for five hours a week do your inbox do your bookkeeping small things like that um and, and then build it up from there yeah, absolutely. And you and guys, like if you haven't uh, checked out Outdoor School, I'm also going to put up the link in the description in the show notes down below so you can go in and check that out as well. So you don't miss out anything. So let's talk about your software, you know, that you had that you sold for eight figure, you know, which is absolutely awesome, which is completely dependent on your VAs, which was again, another awesome part because some people are like, like how that happened, you know, they get shocked over that systems and whatever the process is and the culture what it have how you go in and i use your uh, free up software out there when to get an outsource you know get those people out there for some sort of stuff how you go in and differentiate that between other freelance marketplaces like fiverr or upwork and other platforms as well how you go in and differentiate between those platforms because those are like high platforms out there which is like into the market from a long time so, I mean, I, I used all those other platforms and I yeah. tried to design a, design a platform or a marketplace that had everything I liked and tweaked everything I didn't like. So one thing I didn't like is that they were so big, it took forever to, to go through all the applicants that they would send me. And so with FreeUp, they free up pre-vetted people before it even let them on the platform and matched you up with one to three people so you didn't have to interview 50 people um, and, and did that all quickly. I wanted a platform that had better support and that if anything happened, we would take care of them. So we added a no turnover guarantee. If someone quit, we covered replacement costs, stuff like that. So we really just designed the, the platform that, that I wanted to use. And I still use it, even though I sold it, I, we still hire all our virtual assistants from free app. Yeah. And, and that's one of the key different out there that you mentioned over here. Like if, you, if someone is using like Fiverr or Upwork out there, they have a lot of a base of limitation out there. If someone wants to work on a long-term end, and it's like most of the people, especially in Fiverr, are on the you know short term end out there in most cases, and they really want to just stick to Fiverr and they don't want to move to anywhere out there on a long term end. Right. I mean, hey, here's the here's the thing: you need a good hiring process. Everyone's yeah. always in the mentality like all the VAs on Upwork are good, or all the VAs on Upwork are bad, or or whatever. Like that's not it. All the marketplaces have their own pros and cons. If you don't have a good hiring process. None of that matters. Get a good hiring process like we teach you at Outsource School 
And then you look at the marketplaces and you say, oh, here's the pro and con on free up. Here's a pro and con of Upwork. Here's a pro and con on Fiverr. And then you decide from there based on what pros and cons you actually care about. But you need that hiring process, no matter what marketplace, what agency you use. Yeah, absolutely. The hiring process is the most important part over anything. Absolutely. Definitely makes sense. So uh, like when it comes to like out of school, I ha I know I had done the research and everything out there. What is included? It could you tell us a little bit more about what is inside of out of school? Because I know there's a lot of things like anything, regardless of VA that they need to do. You have mentioned it over there, but still, like, could you talk us about like what is inside out of school? Yeah, there's a lot, and I definitely recommend people go to out of school and set up a call with our team. They'll walk you through everything. But you get our hiring process, so how we interview, how we onboard, how we train, how we manage. We release a new training each month on how to hire for a particular role, whether it's social media, sales, writing, hiring writers, whatever that is. Um, then you also get our software that we created for creating processes and sharing them with your team. We have training on how to create SOPs, uh, standard operating procedures, processes for your remote teams. You get access to our Facebook group, our community, and our support to help you with any VA questions or issues that you come across. And we do live coaching calls in our group. We also have lots of other bonuses that we give people depending on which plan they choose. Um, but yeah, definitely go to outsourceschool.com, set up a call with our team, and they'll walk you through all of that. Awesome. And yeah, guys, like the link is also in the description down below or in the show notes. You can go in and check that out. And one last thing that I want to ask, like what's next for you? Like, right now we're partnering with different companies and uh, helping them scale in return for minority equity. So we're running outsource school. We're running our software, simply SOP. And we have a, a few partnerships already where we're, we're adding about one a quarter. And if anyone's interested, they can shoot me an email, Nathan at outsourceschool.com and I can send you the application. But essentially we're looking for companies that are already doing 30 K plus a month in profit um, that want to be better at building teams, being lean, being scalable, marketing, all that stuff. We come in from a strategic standpoint. We're not on the org chart. We're not taking client calls, um, but helping you come in and scale that thing usually for around 10 to 30% profit share. Mm, that's absolutely awesome. And I'm truly <coughs> excited for that part of your business as well. So absolutely. And yeah, guys, like I've already going to be posting all of the links in the comment section and also in the show notes out there. Be sure to uh, try Outdoor School because Outdoor School have also like a uh, 14 day trial as well where people can go in and test it out if there's a good fit. But it is for most of the people out there who really want to go in and grow their systems and do outsourcing and everything out there on that aspect, you can go in and check that out. So any last thing that you want to say before we round the show up? Um, no, I mean, feel free to follow me, Nathan Hirsch on social media and, and go to outsourceschool.com. Awesome. Definitely. And yeah, guys, just go and do it. And again, Nathan, thank you so much for being on the show. And uh, I really learned a lot on these type of things out there. And Rose, I'm pretty sure that people are going to learn it because it's like the outsourcing is one of the most important aspects where people get stuck on building systems, you know, and right. that is one of the key things out there for these people. So again, thank you so much for your time, man. No problem. Have a good rest of the day. And yeah, guys, thank you so much. And this is it for now. See you in the next show. Until then, peace out.